During this Black History Month, students around the nation are learning about icons of the civil rights movement. But beyond those lessons, a CBS News analysis, analysis rather, found some major problems in the way that students are being taught about some very important moments in American history. Our national correspondent, Jerika Duncan, has been looking into this. And so, Jerika, we've been promoting your story all morning long. I'm mm -hmm. very curious to find out what you all found out. We learned a lot. And what we found out is that how you learn about topics like slavery and the civil rights movement really depends on where you live and the textbooks you're using. And some of the textbooks we looked at, there's information that may surprise you. Is there a problem with how we teach American oh, history in this country? Yes. Renowned scholar Dr. Ibram X. Kendi can't believe what students are learning about America's past. Reviewing these texts closely, you know, now I can see why so many students get to college and, and they're like, why didn't we learn this in high school? Because it isn't in these texts. We asked Kendi, a CBS News contributor, to take a look at four textbooks used in public school classrooms. The first book, The American Pageant, is used to teach advanced placement history. The publisher of the book says more than five million students learn from it each year. We looked at the 16th edition of the book, published in 2016. So here on, on page 346, it says, in the deeper south, mm -hmm. many free blacks were mulattoes. The term mulatto is a racist slur mm -hmm. against biracial people. The book also includes this map, referring to enslaved Africans in 1775 as immigrants, alongside the Dutch, the Scottish, and the German. To refer to them, again, as immigrants mm -hmm. insinuates that they chose to come, the African people who almost totally were forced to come and certainly did not want to come to the United States in chains. Just to see if things have changed, we looked at the latest edition of the book published this year. The map is still there. The assignment asked students to put a price on slaves. What and how students learn about history is different everywhere and sometimes problematic. The teacher, who is white, told them to write funny captions on images of freed slaves. There are reports the teacher made black students act as slaves. There is no national standard for what history is taught. Each state sets standards which outlines what students are expected to learn. CBS News took a look at the social studies standards for all 50 states and the District of Columbia. We found seven states do not directly mention slavery and eight do not mention the civil rights movement. Only two states mentioned white supremacy and 16 list states' rights as a cause of the Civil War, which Kendi says is a problem. This was the term that the Confederate states, that later segregationists and even some slaveholders utilized to hide that they were really fighting for the rights of slaveholders. Kevin Ellis is the chair of the Texas State Board of Education. About 10 percent of the nation's students attend a Texas public school. In 2018, the state changed its standards to teach slavery as the central cause of the Civil War, but it still mentions states' rights. Should states' rights even be taught at all? So I think even when you look at states' rights, it focused around slavery. And so what, we, what we're doing now is just being clear that those states' rights that the South was fighting over was states' rights for them to have slavery. Kendi also took a look at this textbook, Texas History, which is adopted by the state to teach middle school social studies. It covers topics including slavery and the Civil War. This is a picture, and the caption says, some U.S. settlers brought slaves to Texas to help work the fields and do chores. And, you know, I don't, I don't think we should describe uh, slave labor as chores. A few pages later, Kendi pointed out this image. The caption for this picture says, what characteristics of slave life does this image show? Does right. this depict slavery? If we were going to have a single picture that depicted slavery, it should be a picture that demonstrates terror and violence. We also asked Ellis what he thought about the picture. Well, I think one of the, you know, as, as we go through the, the, the struggles um, and the injustices that the slaves went through, I think the important thing is not to do what was done in earlier times and, and make it sound like they were better off here than they were back in but their... But this, picture, their, this um, picture doesn't look so bad. You know, there's no... 
marks on anyone's body, and this is supposed to represent enslaved people. I think the, the point that's being made is the fact this was not a true representation of what slaves went through and the injustices that they went through. And, and I can't answer why that made it in that textbook. We have progressed in, in the past five years and 10 years and 20 years, and, and we still have more work to do. And I think this would be an example of that. The publisher of that Texas history book, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, told CBS News in a statement that it appreciates and values Dr. Kendi's analysis of the textbook, and they are making intentional changes to the content in future editions. Cengage, the publisher of the American Pageant, said the authors work strenuously to provide an accurate, fair, and engrossing account of American history, and they are always striving to improve. They note the newest edition makes corrections and includes firsthand accounts from African Americans of the time. So important to point out, though, that the publishers can make these changes, but it's up to the states to adopt them. Yeah, it's that's up, right. it's, states can it's up to it. the states. And you know, it's funny because I talked to a, a girlfriend of mine. Her daughter's in high school, and she just got an A in her U.S. history class. And I had told her about this story, and she said, "We have to teach them. It's up to the parents." And I think there is sort of this unsaid thing, even especially in black communities, mm -hmm. that you're going to learn it from your family and not necessarily mm -hmm. rely on. Mm -hmm the school to do it, just because you look at these changes that they've made, this is in the last five years. Yeah, exactly. that's very recent. It's well, so it's true. the most alarming thing you said in that story was that there were seven states where seven slavery states. is not even mentioned. Or civil rights. Yeah. That's right. what I find so jaw-dropping. Yeah. And I think when you're a kid, you're reading the textbook, it doesn't occur to you to challenge it. Right. You need a story like this to let you know. Yes. And it's also unfortunate, I think, many times in the black community, not really knowing our history. Right. I think that is a problem. Well, that if the schools problem. aren't teaching it, sometimes it's hard to know it. It's, it's very, very difficult. Hi, right, Trika. That was very informative. Thank you.